Cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar, which pays homage to Christopher Columbus's discovery of tobacco during his expedition of the New World. This medium to full-bodied cigar shows off the kind of exquisite construction expected by master blender A.J. Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli filler, bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined New World gives off a beautiful billow of smoke and hits you with spice and citrus flavors. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of the New World, flavors become more complex and begin to express hints of hazelnut and coffee. The New World is a first-time collaboration between A.J. Fernandez and his father Ishmael, making this cigar stand out in the A.J. Fernandez line. To commemorate the union of father and son, A.J. Fernandez is offering you this masterpiece at an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. A.J. Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year. The New World, Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. If you created the Aging Room Small Batch Cigar Line, the highest rated boutique cigar brand of our times, what would you do next? Well, if you're Raphael Nodell from Boutique Blend Cigars, you would combine your three most important passions of your life, Cuba, music, and cigars, and create a new classic, La Boheme Cigars. La Boheme is Raphael's take on the golden age of Cuban cigars. La Boheme is a sophisticated blend of extra-aged and hard-to-find tobaccos from the Dominican Republic. A medium-bodied cigar, rich in flavors reminiscent of the island he left 35 years ago in a small boat with his family. Why wait for the embargo to be lifted? Smoke La Boheme today. Blending is in our DNA. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. We've been big pimping all day. Well, at least I have, anyway. Oh, yeah. Having a good time smoking cigars, yeah, drinking the bourbon. Pimp. Now I'm on the cognac. It's going to get... Oh, it's no, it's not pretty. Go. This you know, could get dangerous. This could get dangerous. Stogie Santa's in the studio, <laughs> oh, along with Will Cooper. We're going to round out the show by doing some cigar trivia. A couple um, of things, though. I'm looking at the clock here, and we're at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. We started Well, that's at actually... 10, oh, it is 7 o'clock. Yeah, Holy which shit. Which is 10 a.m. We started Eastern time. We claimed last year we set the record for the longest single-day cigar-dedicated podcast. We've definitely beaten it this year. And there's a couple of segments we did not get in. Um, we did not get our stogies of the weekend. Um, we have a montage, which we will put up um, separately... Um, of some g- clips from the show from the greatest hits. And then we did have an interview with Raphael Nodell. We're having some technical issues. We're going to work on that. We apologize for that. Excellent. Yep. So, um, but we, cigar trivia was a big part of today. I, um, and I've kind I of weathered this. a storm. I've kind of weathered all challenges today. So we've got the cigar trivia thing. It's 20 questions, Stogie Santa, all that right. I came up with. Right. It's multiple choice. Okay. I've given this quiz. To some people you may recognize. First and foremost, Mr. Will Cooper, okay. who's in first place at 85% yep. correct. I then gave it to uh, Mr. Dave Garofalo, who's at 80% in second place. Oh, I then gave it to Mr. John Carney. He's at 70% in third place. Um, I then gave it to Todd Lascola and Glenn Loop from the CRA. And they are tied for fourth place at uh, fourth place or third place? What oh, did I say? Oh, fourth place. Anyway, they're oh, tied at yeah, fourth, right. 60%. In fifth place at 45% is Dave Burke from the Cigar Jukebox podcast. Uh, like In his defense, right. though, it was 1230 at night. He wasn't no, on Australia. top of this game. And in Australia. Yeah, yeah and he's Australian, so we kind of give that to him as well. So, the benefit that you will... I think he beat me. The benefit that you will have, Stokie Santa, is that you will know whether you gave the correct or incorrect answer. See, the previous guests we gave this quiz to do not know what the correct answers were because okay. we didn't give them out until now. So wow. if you're watching all day and wondering what the answers to these questions are and haven't looked them up on the Internet already, uh, you will find out right the now. answers right now as I ask Stokey Santa. <laughs> 20 questions with the Stogie Geeks. You ready, Stogie oh, Santa? I'm ready. There's two categories. The first is cigar history. Okay. When did Connecticut Broadly first appear in the cigar market? Is it A, 1920s, B, 1820s, C, 
1950s, or D, the last time William Cooper had hair? Oh, uh, that thing, 1820 and Coop? I don't know. I'll, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. <laughs> Again, I'll, I'll I, can I guess a long time? I'll say 1920. You were incorrect. Everyone got that wrong but me, I think. Uh, I think I got it that. is the 1820s yeah, I when Connecticut I, Broadly wow. first yeah. appeared uh, in the cigar yeah, I market. I think I got that one right, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the phrase, close but no cigar, originated from A, Bill Clinton's presidency, B, a cigar being the popular prize given out at, as a carnival game prize, C, Hollywood movies, or D, what the FDA has been saying. Oh, I like to see the D just to say it, but I'll say C. C Hollywood movies. Mm -hmm. You are incorrect. I told you I'm going for the best score. <laughs> <It is. laughs> so the phrase "close but no cigar" originates from a cigar being a popular prize given out at carnivals. Really? Believe it or not. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fidel Castro got his own brand in 1966, which was called A Monte Cristo, B Castro cigars. C, Cohiba, or D, Partagas? Wow. I'm going to strike out B. I'll give you a hint. You are smoking one of those branded cigars right now. Okay. It's called Debonair. No, uh, Cohiba. Cohiba, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, are yeah. correct, sir. Wait, yes. You got it wrong. <laughs> Cohiba <laughs> is the brand right, that was it. created for Fidel Castro right, in, 19, in 1966, oh, which yeah. is interesting. So we could spin that question a lot of different ways. But mm -hmm. in 1966, they created Cohiba for Fidel Castro. Well, that's why they come out with 1966 afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Huh? Like yep. I should know. Yeah, they did that. In oh, so they came out with a 1966 release or of Cohiba. Yeah. That's oh. right. Yeah, that was the 45th anniversary one. Right. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. Yep. Okay, as I ash into my laptop. Did it again with my You're, mic. You always move your mic out of the way, dude. Oh, I'm the worst. To, uh, at least five Paul's times. Paul's had to actually correct me when Multiple off times. Okay. All right, all right. So, go. Stogie Santa, where does the term Stogie come from? North Pole. Is it A, George <laughs> Burns invented it, B, Cuba, C, it's Spanish for cigar, or D, Pennsylvania manufacturers who used Kona Stogas or covered wagons? Wow. D, my name. No. Um, D, Pennsylvania manufacturers who co used Conestogas or covered wagons. Yeah. yeah, that is correct. I was shocked. A lot of people got that one wrong. And that is it. We've talked about that George on the show Burns, before. A lot of people had George Burns with that one. And I tell you what, we I put that question in there because we talked about it on the show because we are called the Stogie Geeks, and mm -hmm. we talked about the origin of the term mm -hmm. Stogie on previous shows. Okay. The next question. A thousand tobacco seeds can fit inside of what? A, a pint glass. B, nestled in my glorious chest hair. C, a thimble, or D, a 55-gallon drum? Thimble. Thimble oh, is correct. Ding, ding. Yes, thimble is Three. correct. A thousand tobacco seeds can, in fact, fit inside of a thimble. What does the term hecho a mano mean? Is it A, man hands, B, handmade, C, manly men, or D, Hector's man? Handmade. Handmade. I think most people got that question correct, yeah. mostly because my other answers were completely ridiculous. Um, I was going for yeah. that chest hair. The chest, yeah. Uh, so Hecho Amado does, in fact, mean handmade. It appears on all of our cigar bands for the right, most part. Exactly. Right. Uh, and a lot of people don't know what it means. Sometimes I, I have to forget and I have to go oh, look it up. But, yeah, yeah. It, is, it does mean handmade. The Cuban embargo, banning the importation of cigars and other goods from Cuba, was put into effect in which year? A, 1962, B, 1961, C, 1960, or D, 1992? 1962. That is correct. Ah, and yeah. it's somewhat of a trick question a because now. in 1960, we did put some restrictions on Cuba, which was the beginnings of the Cuban embargo. 1962 was actually when we enacted the uh, ban importing goods such as uh, cigars and tobacco. And that's when Kennedy got his cigars before yep. we put yes. it in. Yep. And that's when Kennedy got his cigars, which were... Uh, H. Altman Petit Coronas or something like H. that. H. Altman Petit Corona. H. Altman Petit Coronas, which could have been another question as well. Um, also, 1992 was also a year that there was an amendment to the Cuban embargo. I yep. forget the details, but there was an amendment in 1992. Okay. The first successful commercial crop in the United States was uh, of tobacco was cultivated in 1612 in which state? Is it A, Connecticut, B, Rhode Island, C, Virginia, or D, Pennsylvania? 
Wow. Pennsylvania, I'm guessing. That is incorrect, but that is a popular answer. I tripped a lot of people up by putting Pennsylvania yeah. in there because they. It, I think it it's because they still. Oh, you just is, said 1682. No, it's actually Virginia in is 1612. Uh, most people did say Pennsylvania, I think, because they're such a popular yeah, right. place for tobacco today. But it actually, it actually was Virginia. In 1994, the Cuban government created this organization to handle the global distribution and marketing of Cuban cigars. Is it A, General Cigar, B, Cohiba, C, Habano's SA, or D, Swedish Match? Hmm. SA is later. Um, What was number two again? It is A, General Cigar, B, Cohiba, C, Habano's SA, or D, Habano's SA is the correct Mm -hmm. answer. I think most people got that right. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, Habano's essay still today yeah. yep. exists as the, the uh, right. Cuban uh, uh, group. So, uh, In what year did Davidoff cease production of cigars in Cuba? Was it A, 1961, B, 1966, C, 1989, or D, 1991? B. 1966 is incorrect. It was actually 1991. I thought, going back on the Davidoff, you know, I thought it would be long before that. I, when I tried to answer that question, I was like, well, when is the last time I saw someone publish a review Look, that's what I'm on saying. a vintage yeah. Davidoff Cuban? Yeah. yeah, it was actually 1991. Yeah. yeah. I, I got that wrong. I thought it was 89. Wow. Will actually came up with that question, yeah, uh, which remember, he kind of cheated. His score is somewhat Mark, skewed because you came up with that question, but, but I got it wrong. Oh, but do you remember that. Mark Jr.? Yeah, that was the only question, by the way, that wasn't in my score, but that was Mark Jr. Remember he brought one from his father-in-law oh, from like yeah, 1985? Yeah. That's kind of what inspired me with that. Right. I remember he said it was mid-'80s, so I was kind of thinking that, and then I went and looked it up. The next series of questions, Stogie Santa, are on tobacco plants. Cigar tobacco plants require how many hours of sunlight per day? Is it A4, B6, C8, or D10? I do want to preface this with no one has gotten this answer correct. D. D10 is incorrect, which is what most people answer in this question. It's actually eight hours of sunlight per day. Really? According to yeah. Tobacconist University. Tobacco that from Tobacconist University. Yeah, wow. So the lowest priming of a tobacco plant is called what? A, Lajero, B, Viso, C, Seiko, or D, Volado? D. Volado is correct. That is the lowest priming Mm -hmm. of the tobacco plant. Cured tobacco leaf is brown in color because what has been replaced by carotene? Is it A, chlorophyll, B, cholesterol, C, caloric acid, or D, pigment? I would say D, pigment. It is actually A, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll? Chlorophyll. When we talked on the show about um, uh, the green wrapper scars. Uh, Claro. Uh, Claro wrappers. We talked about chlorophyll, how Mm -hmm. the chlorophyll still remains in the cigar, keeping it green. That's why I put that question in there. Wow. Good question. It's chlorophyll. Um, What is the country, and I got that from Tobacco University as well. Um, What is the country of origin of the Cameroon wrapper? Is it A, Nicaragua, B, Indonesia, C, Cameroon, or D, Ecuador? C. C, Cameroon is correct. I think everyone got Africa. that answer correct. Mm. Yep. We did a whole segment on Cameroon wrappers, which yep. was very, very popular. Yep. So wanted to reinforce that. To create a Maduro wrapper, you need what? A, a Maduro seed plant. B, to use the right fermentation process. C, a Maduro priming. Or D, black paint. E. E? B. Oh, B. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, B is correct. Um, we Jose Blanco talked about that in his blending seminar, mm-hmm. how it's one of the larger misconceptions that we have in the industry. I think it's a plant. <laughs> Maduro is a seed or a plant or a priming or, yeah. a, you know, people just use black paint or any kind of artificial methods to do that now. Um, but it is, in fact, a fermentation process. You are correct. Yep. What is the top most priming of a tobacco plant? Is it A, Corona? B. Lajero, C. Viso, or D. Velado? A. It is A. Corona. Yep. Some people did, a couple of you did answer Lajero. Yep. There is actually a priming above Lajero called the, right. the Corona priming. Yeah, sometimes priming. you hear Corona called Medio Tiempo, too. Correct. Oh, interesting. Yep. Yeah. Very, very good, yeah, it's a, Mr. It, it Cliff, doesn't, Cliff Clavin. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, 
Well, I'm the cast. Ah, I'm, I'm a ca- ah, that's what Casa ah, Fernandez calls ah, it. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, you know, it's uh, the end of the night. That's uh-uh. it. The lights are in my eyes. That's why I'm getting the wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> this type of plant. It's a bourbon. I, <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> this type of plant was developed in the 1930s by Diego Rodriguez. It's named after its birthplace in Vuelta Abuejo region, and it was the premier wrapper for Cuban cigars in the ni- until the 1990s. Is it A, Habano, B, Criollo, C, Corojo, or D, Piloto Cubano? C. Corojo, correct. Well, he's the only one who got that, I think. No, someone else got that, too. I don't know who else it was. There was a couple Dave got of, it? Dave got that right. See, the yeah. trick with that was I said Criollo. Everyone was saying Criollo, Criollo. because of 98. Right. That but 98 it, was because of what they did. They did a 98 because of the uh, the mold. Yeah. Right. They did that. Yep. Yeah, Corojo is the, the, the correct answer. Yep. Very good. Primarily used for filler tobacco, this Dominican tobacco plant derives part of its name from the Spanish word for aroma. Is it A, Piloto Cubano, B, Olor Dominicano, C, San Vicente, or D, Chabal Valley? D. D, Chabal Valley? Mm-hmm. That's incorrect, actually. Chabal Valley is where a lot of the Dominican tobacco is grown. Mm-hmm. Um, but Olor Dominicano is the type of uh, Dominican tobacco plant where Olor means aroma in okay. Spanish. Yeah, and if folks are the Chabal Valley, that's what's used, that wrapper from... S- Chabal? So John Carney got that question wrong. I know. And he works for La Flor Dominicana. I told him, I'm like, dude, you got one question wrong that you're going to take a lot of shit for. And that was the one. Not that I knew the answer before I wrote the question, but after researching it, um, there's a lot of articles actually written about the three most popular um, tobacco strains grown in the Dominican Republic, which are Piloto Cubano, Olor Dominicano, and San Vicente, which you see in a lot of fillers, binders, wrappers yeah. Um, yeah. In, in the Dominican Republic. But Saval Valley, so. that's where they grow the wrapper for the Oktoberfest. Yeah, so a, Tabal Valley is very popular but growing it's a, region but it's in Dominican not a plant. Republic. It's a it's a it's a region, region or valley. Right. Yes, in, in I'm the not Dominican sure Republic. what the leaf is though on that, but I just know it's Saval Valley. I, I think what I was researching is a lot of the Dominican strains are actually grown in. Chabal Valley. Yeah. If we're saying that correctly. I may be butchering some of the pronunciation in typical oh, Stoic right, Geeks fashion. Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, picked or primed tobacco leaves are hung in barns, also known as casas de tabac, for approximately how many days before mov- moving to the next stage? Is it A, 30 days, B, 7 days, C, 50 days, or D, 60 days? Mm, that's a great question. That was another tough one. I'll say B. So the answer is actually 50 days, according to Tobacco University. 50 days? Prime tobacco leaves are hung in the barns, or Casa de Tabac, for 50 days right after they're picked or primed right from the plant. So from the plant to the first curing barn, Tobacco wow. University says 50 days. Yep. Uh, in the first phase of fermentation, leaves are bundled together in gavilas, or bunches of five or more leaves. Then laid in short piles about one to three feet tall, which are called A. Burrows, B. Pilones, C. Piles, or D. Mounds. B. Pilones. B. Pilones. Right. I think everyone got that one. Pilones is the one. Yeah, I think everyone got that one, too. So, we are going to calculate Stogie like, Santa's I think I score. I 40%. 40%. Um, no, no, you did better. You think you beat Dave? I'm f- Not by much. He no, did. his score is actually 60%. So you're tied. Glenn so Luke. you're tied. Glenn Loop, Todd Lascola, Stogie Santa are tied, and uh, Dave Garofalo is at eighty percent. Will Cooper is at eighty five. But one question on that, I did create. So there's a little. So you're cabin. probably nice in fact difference. tied with Dave. Well, or pretty he close. got four wrong. I got three. So it's hard to. It, it, it's, it's, hard pretty to close. It, it, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Yeah. It's pretty close. Yeah. It's pretty close. Yeah. No one. Yeah. It shows you that I know nothing. He had That's nineteen fine. questions. He couldn't <laughs> think up the last one. So. Uh, in the process of doing that, I actually. Um, Bought a tobacconist university uh, hundred dollar certification thing. We're gonna do we get my tobacconist university. Yeah, we're, we're gonna. Yeah, and, and, uh, I think it's really good. Having gone through the blending seminars from Manuel Anoa, Mike Herculotz, which yeah. I did through Mr. J. Savannah Smoke Shop, and Jose Blanco, who I did with another shop in Rhode Island that I had never visited before in my entire right, life. And, and you sit there, and, and they tell you the answers, and you sit, and what happens? You just. It is amazing. It Have you been is. through Jose's seminar? No, I haven't. So he gives you a, like a Churchill-sized cigar, and he puts four or five different wrappers on it, and he goes around to everyone in the room, 
And he's like, what flavors are you getting? What flavors are you getting? Then he goes around again. He's like, what kind, what kind of tobacco is it? Where is it from and what yeah. kind of tobacco? So you have to say Ecuadorian Habano, Nicaraguan Habano, or, or whatever. I was like one out of four this time around. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, don't feel bad. He's like, no one gets that right. I've gotten two the maximum right. Now, this time I did it. It was with um, the same cigar as last year, and he had told me that. Had he not told me that, I probably still would have got it wrong because I wouldn't remember any of the answers. Right, right. Um, so, One of them was Ecuadorian Habano. Well, I don't know. Do we want to tell it in case people go in a seminar? Well, probably not. Yeah. There okay. you go. Yeah. I did, the only reason I remember that is because I guess Nicaraguan Habano. And that was totally based on color, yeah. Yeah. not taste. And I'm mm. like, dude, I, I, I kind of cheated. Like, my palate didn't pick that up. Like, visually, it looked like Habano, so I guess Nicaraguan Habano, but it was actually yeah. Ecuadorian Habano. Yeah. And, and That's I'll the one answer I'll, I'll, I'll give away. Yeah, the best part is how he picks on you, too, by the way. So if you're if you're not one to, like, be interactive, mm-hmm. you might not enjoy that, stuff, but I think you will. And then his, his kind of one-liners he throws in – in the middle, uh, are just... He always talks about potatoes. Big Idaho, but you know what was cool? At the seminar I went to, we had two big Idaho potatoes. Yeah, he always talks two, about an Idaho a potato. big Idaho potato, yeah. That's always a good... I love the blending seminars. I get a mm-hmm. whole... I, and Fred Rui does one. Hanky Kellner does one. Um, uh, Mike Kirklotz. Mike Kirklotz I've been to. Yep. And it's amazing how what you can do just by a leaf placement or just, you know, what you want to do to make that the, flavor. The ratios of yep. fillers, yep. the kind of binder, the, the wrapper, of mm-hmm. course. Um, I want to, you know, I wanted to ask Phil this during the, the segment. I want Phil to do a, a seminar. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be great. I oh, think he'd be I great. The alchemy yeah. seminar. Yeah. Yeah. Alch- yeah. Phil, if you're listening, uh, it's up there. We'll talk. It's kind of a charge out to Phil to to do that. I think he'd be great at it as well. And a lot of us would be great. Uh, it'd be great at it. It's a lot of fun to do the mm-hmm. the seminars. Yeah. No. I I totally. Uh, and they're all very different, which uh, which I like. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely. I've been to your Hankies. Hankies focuses a lot on the tongue, mm-hmm. and the flavors you get on the tongue. Yeah, where well, your palate picks up sweetness, yeah. sour. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah, did you go to the one at IPCPR a few years ago? He, he was at uh, no, uh, I didn't get to make that. That was I a really good one, and and he you smoke Peritos at that one too. Jose, you're not going to smoke Peritos, but you'll get you really understand the effect of that wrapper in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do we want to uh, give away first? Well, we have let's give away five silks. Five silks. These are five of the new Silk Petite Coronas, which we smoked in a previous segment, which are awesome, Awesome, by the way. very I mean, awesome I mean, cigar. They did a great job with those. You guys did it, man. Paul Joyle said during the segment that this cigar has a double binder. Tell me which countries both of those binders come from. Email the answer to the show at stogeeks.com, and we'll give away five. And we get a lot more to give away. Um, so make sure you pay attention to the Stogie Geek show. Um, for, for this five, email the show at stogeeks.com. Which two binders? Yep. Is in the silk blend <coughs> for Mr. Paul Joyle. All right, this is where you guys fill time while I drink and smoke. You know, <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, well, <laughs> while Stogie Santa checks his messages here. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, just, my wife just called me up and said, loser. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been. <laughs> is she watching you? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, Tell her that. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, you know, hey, look, um, this has been a very interesting day. Uh, it's educational, and you know, so we want to continue to bring you this type of programming. I mean, yeah. f- and it's very, very important. Um, so, again, um, Cigar Rights of America, <coughs> $35 for one year. Renew. Um, I'm going to send you a cigar if you send proof with your, with, using my ambassador code, one, 0159. Email the show at stogiegeeks.com. I'm going to keep that offer open till the end of the month. So Wow. Yeah, so that's... You know, it's but at the end of the month, um, that that's that's gonna be it on that. What was that? Oh, yeah, end yeah. of November. The end of November. Yeah, Thank, see that? I'm, I'm like, wow. No, yeah. I'm one thinking day it's, for me. I'm thinking it's November already, and I <laughs> I apologize. No, it's it's throughout the month of November. Uh, so thanks for a uh, little birdie in my ear from the, the, the production guys, who did remind me we only have one more day. Um, what do we want to do for this Partagas box? That's a very Good question. This is a oh, okay. F- this since is we're a full no, box since we're <coughs> since we're on tobacco, provided by our sponsor, General Cigar, the Partagas 1845 Extra Fuerte, which they delivered last year, and this is the gigante size. So you get a nice meaty <coughs> cigar with this here. Beautiful box, 
it has a very, very interesting packaging here. Phil Zangi, during his interview, described all of the blend components of the Indian motorcycle in the natural cigar. Yep. What are all of those blending components? Yep. What different types of tobacco make up Indian motorcycle? We'll send you that part of this box. Yep. There you go. There you go. It's a good question. I'm all about the tobacco this, this yeah, episode because I had to put about. together those questions and, and did some research. So um, what else do we want to give away, Will? We have, we have, we have, do we have a, a prize pack? We have, um, we have a box of Silk Lanceros there. Oof. Oh, right, so grab that box of Silk Lanceros. We're going to give that gonna, away, too. We'll put it. I'm in a generous mood. I've been drinking. Yes. Oh, that's Best. a great question. Um, this is. A I, I actually I have a question for this. Um, I had it in scale. Oh, uh, at the beginning of the interview, uh, since this is a Jay Garado cigar uh, for this box of Silk Lanceros, uh, Mr. Stogie Santa and Paul Joyle mentioned which cigar was the bestseller in their shop. Mm -hmm. Which cigar was that? Send the answer to the show at StogieGeeks.com, and you win a box. Of Jay Grotto Silk Lanceros. What about, do we do in the other box or? Uh, I'm going to save those for future okay. contests right, uh, we'll on our blog and social yep. media okay. as well. I think that's a great prize for that. So three great. <laughs> We've got another one. Crap. Thank I don't know you. if I can come up with another uh, question uh, now. Let's be the army. Hey, <laughs> we have a pack of, courtesy of our sponsor, PDR Cigars, um, a five pack of the PDR uh, Capo Maduro, 18, PDR 1870 Capo Maduro's. Um, as with all of our Stogie Geeks prize packs, they will come with a Bovita pack um, for optimum hum humidification. Absolutely. Yep. So and maybe this one we want to do is send a selfie of your Halloween costume. There you go. That, that you one. send a selfie of your Halloween costume. To the show at StogieGeeks.com. We'll pick the best, the one that we like the best. From the waist up. Yep. From the waist up, please. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. That's very good. Yes, yep. make sure you're fully clothed. And if you don't send it, this is going back to someone else. So, uh, That's it, right. It doesn't have to be, if one person sends a lame costume, Costume, uh, they will win. <clears throat> That's right. The show at SueGeeks.com, your best Halloween costume selfie, wins the pack of PDR cigars, Capa Maduro, five yeah. pack. Yep. That's four prizes we gave away on the end of the show. Yeah. It we pays to listen amazing. to the Stewie Geeks. Two, box, two great boxes and a couple of five packs. and Gave away a lot of cigars. Yep. Smoking a fine cigar right now. Oh, oh, yeah. How is that cigar doing? So Stogie said I lit up the cigar that Will and I started the show with, yeah, well, we'll which is we'll the yeah. Cohiba Maduro Genius. Yeah. Good stuff. Good yeah, stuff. I, yeah. You know, it's, you know, like I said, I want to really thank a bunch of the people who are really uh, responsible, you know, for being on the mm. show today. Um, because first I want to thank Chris and Nick. Absolutely. Um, production crew production did fantastic crew, today. Yep. Put Absolutely. A, and we went over time, and they were trying to keep us on time. Yeah, and, and, they, and, and they really... To their credit, it was really us that... Uh, I, I read the schedule wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, no. I wanna, I there want, was Jameson in my coffee this morning. Oh, so. All right. Yeah, I've oh. been sampling all day, so... Yeah, I want to thank uh, Kruk. Who came down from New Hampshire? Yeah, absolutely. He, big, big, uh, big. He stayed yeah. the whole day. He was Thank here you. before I got here. God bless um, him. And he uh, just appreciate finally great chance to meet you. Absolutely, yeah. my uh, pleasure. Big, Thanks for coming down. He sat big, in on a segment for us. Yes, he did. Um, and uh, Big Pete brought pizza for us. Oh, it was awesome. Um, I'm glad he did. Yeah, that. he came for a little while. You know, and our, and our guests. I want to thank uh, Hector Alfonso from Espinosa Cigars, Dave Burke from Cigar Jukebox. Cue the music. Cue the pimping music now. Yeah. So. Jonathan Carney from La Flor Dominicana. Uh, Glenn Lou from Cigar Rights of America. Uh, Todd Lascola from Havana Cigar Club. Rafael Nodell, who we did not get his segment in, but I want to thank him. We will get him in there. Victor Vitali, Legacy Brands. Uh, John, Louis, John, Mich John Michel Louis of Saga Cigars. Of course, Phil Zanke from Deb Benair Cigars. Stogie Santa. Stogie uh, Santa in the house. In the house. <laughs> he, a, a, a Stogie geek for life. Paul Joyle from uh, Ocean State Cigars. And then just a quick shout out to all the sponsors who. you doing it. shout outs? You're doing shout outs. I'm, now. I'm making this set. <laughs> AJ, uh, or thank you to our sponsors AJ Fernandez Cigars, Boutique Blend Cigars, Debonair Cigars, Duran Cigars, General Cigar, The Crassier Cigars, Havana Cigar Club, M Bombay, PDR Cigars, and Saga Cigars. 
we are now uh, we made we made history today. But more importantly, hopefully you had some fun and uh, and most importantly, sign up for the Cigar Rights this of is America. Really Cigarrights.org. Go there. Sign up for a membership. Please, please, please do that if you smoke cigars. Keep your cigar. Yes. We, we Use really, Ambassador we, Code zero one five nine and uh, keep this great hobby going and uh, smoke cigars with your friends. Smoke cigars while you watch football. Smoke cigars while you watch the Story Geeks. Um, and make sure you, you you make a donation and, and sign up for a membership. It's like important. like a, you know, Glenn and others said, it's thirty five dollars. You sign up and you get cigars. So yeah. buy a couple of cigars to support your habit. It just makes so much sense. Yeah, good cigars. Yep. yep. So thanks everyone. Here is to four years having a show. Yeah. And to the next four and beyond, Stogie Geeks. Thanks hey. everyone Thank for you. watching. Ciao. We'll for see now. everyone on the next episode.